I have this friend, and he kind of invited himself on this trip. He kind of treated this vacation like a trip to the club. Like, he was trying to find where the coke was, trying to get as drunk as he can, and trying to hit on as many girls as he can, but except the pool is, like, my family. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Hello? Hello? How you doing, man? I'm good. I've been chilling. I'm making some chicken and rice right now, waiting to tell you this story I have. What is the story you have? Well, <laughs> all right, so... I have this friend. I've been friends with him since high school. And um, I take family trips usually every year um, with my family to the, our home country. And he kind of invited himself on this trip a couple months ago. Well, not him, his mom. His mom came up to me and was like, hey, I'm going to surprise him with tickets on your family trip. And I was like, what? Like, okay, I guess. So that was where it started. Wait, so okay, step trip. back real quick. So, okay. his mom, so first of all, where, where's, where's your home country? Uh, Honduras. Honduras. So your friend, his mom comes up and is like, I'm surprising my son with tickets to go to Honduras with you. Yes, exactly. Bizarre. Okay, continue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we go on this trip. We go on the trip, finally. And it's around New Year's, and uh, my mom has a house there, so we have a little uh, New Year's party on the 31st with all the family over. Like, all my uncles, all my aunts, every single one of my cousins is there. You know, it's a family function. And, uh, you know, my family likes to drink alcohol, and, you know, they like to have a good time. People there were drunk and stuff. Everyone's having a good time. Um, but my friend, he likes to drink a lot so he kind of got blackout wasted and drank these three entire bottles of like the cheapest hardest liquor that they sell over there and uh he ended up asking my cousins around for coke throughout the night and i had to find out from one of them and that was kind of the first red flag of many on this trip that he invited himself on but i kind of brushed it under the rug the next morning and, you know, I saw my good friend, but then we go on this another like a, uh, we go on this island on uh, on this in my country or whatever. And he starts talking to my one of my closest cousins. She's around my age as well. And he starts talking to her like privately on WhatsApp. And I'm like, OK, like, what the fuck? What, what are they talking about? And then basically he's he tells my girlfriend eventually that he starts falling for my cousin and starts having a crush on her and how he makes him feel so like himself and how he's falling head over heels for her. And he was waiting till after the trip to even tell me any of this because he didn't want to ruin his chances of doing anything with her while on this trip. So he figured he'd just wait until after. And I'm finding all of this out for my girlfriend, mind you. He's not telling me anything. Because he's telling my girlfriend this stuff. Now, I mean, look, do we know? I mean, how does your cousin feel about your friends? Well, to be honest with you, she actually entertained it as well. So she kind of like, because she's really friendly and all this stuff. So she was, you know, like being, talking to him, being nice. And she started, I guess, being kind of flirty with him as well. You know, and I don't really, honestly, like, honestly, I don't care what they do. They're adults. I'm not mad over the fact that they're talking or whatever i'm more so right. mad about the fact that he didn't tell me about it like if he would have just all told right. me i would have been like okay cool dude i just don't want to see it or i don't you know like all i right. think like he uh, yeah you know like i don't really care about that it's more so how all he right. went about it you know all I mean? right all right so there was the the out al- getting a little too drunk he's hitting on your cousin what else is going on All right, so we have another family party at one of my aunt's house a couple of days later, um, celebrating one of my aunt's birthdays. And uh, we're all there. And during the night, I had this other cousin that is kind of like more of a distant cousin, but uh, but I met her on this trip. So um, she was at this party, and he met her on the New Year's party at my house, and he saw her there. Mind you, this is a different cousin, a completely different cousin. He's just he's just he, going after all he, your cousins. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. He he, he kind of treated this vacation like a 
like a like a trip to the club. Like he was trying to find where the coke was, trying to get as drunk as he can, and trying to hit on as many girls as he can. But except the pool is like my family. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe his mom. Yeah. Maybe that's why so, his mom invited him because he just like she wanted him to find a girlfriend or something. <laughs> I don't know. I, honestly, okay. honestly, he he said he. When I talked to him about it, eventually he told me that um, he told me that oh, like it's not my fault. Like it just happened. Like you know, like like you like I didn't expect to just uh, fall for your cousin and this and that. Oh, but I didn't right. tell you he actually made out with this other cousin I was telling you about. She told yes. So what happened at this? Like, oh, I want. What happened at this uh, this party? Your aunt's party. Yeah, yeah. So she tells one of my cousins. She's like, oh, tell. Your my friend's name. She's like, tell him that I want to um, say bye to him because I guess she was about to leave. So they call him into the room. He's about to, he thinks he's about to say bye to her, and then apparently on his like what he told me was that uh, she grabbed him and then kissed him, and then he just couldn't say no, so he went along with it and then made out with her essentially. And then he, he told the sis like thirty seconds after it happened, he's like, I just made out with. Uh, your cousin or whatever. He's like, he's like, I wasn't gonna say no, like this and that. Like he was kind of flexing it a little bit when he came yeah. in the room. Yeah, yeah. He's bragging about making out with your cousin. Yeah, and he's drunk too, so it kind of makes it a little worse. He kind of like is way more energetic and enthusiastic when he's drunk. You know. Damn. This man. <laughs> this man invited himself on your family trip and then made out with your cousin. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's that's very funny. Yeah, so I I actually ended up talking to him about this after the trip. And during the trip, I, I was like, you know, I was kind of caught off guard, but I wasn't really thinking about it too much because I was just trying to enjoy my family trip. You know, I don't see my family too often. Um, like, they all live in Honduras, and I live uh, in the States. So... I, you know, whenever I see them, I want to be around them and stuff. Um, but I was just focusing on that. But when I came back here, I kind of started thinking about the situation more. I was like, you know what? Like, those things he did was kind of fucked up. Like, I don't know. Like, and then I called him about it. And, oh, actually, I, I didn't say anything about it because I kind of just wanted to simmer and think about it for a little bit. Sure, brush it under the rug. But then he would. Yeah, yeah. But uh, his... Uh, he had like a relative uh, pass away right when he got back. Um, so he kind of called me and was like, Hey, like, can you come over? You know? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I, I went over to his house to kind of like hang out with him. You know, he was home alone cause his mom uh, traveled somewhere. And, uh, and uh, so I went to his house and we're hanging out and stuff. And then he's like, Hey man, I got to talk to you. I'm like, okay, like, what's up? And he's like, I think I'm falling in love with your cousin. And mind you, this is when we get back from the trip. You know, like, he, I, th I thought that he had stopped talking to her or whatever. But he was like, I think I'm falling for your cousin. You know? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's just telling me how he doesn't feel any type of other way about any other girl. And how he feels so good around her. And I don't know. He was just telling me all that. And... I was just telling him, like, no, like, I mean, I don't care what you do. I'm just, I'm, t I'm gonna tell you that I think it is weird, and you can do what you want with that information. If that makes sense, you know. But I will let you know how I feel. But you can do whatever you want. You know and what, I mean? what did he do with that information? He just kind of begged me to change my mind. Like right after I told him that, he was like, I, I told him I was like, you know, like you can do whatever you want, but. Uh, I'm gonna just let you know that it's weird. You can do whatever you want. He was like, "Are you sure you're not gonna? Are, are you sure you're not gonna be okay with it? Like, are like, are you are you positive you're never gonna change your mind?" And then I, I was like, "No, like I just I just told you 20 times how I felt about it. Like, see you know, if I'm gonna." Wow, <sighs> man, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to this story. Is it over? Are you done? Is there more stuff? Um. I think I think that's the gist of it. But he basically just begged me and kind of just asked me like, "Hey, like, for sure, wouldn't it be okay?" And I'm like, "No, 
I don't think so. And then he was like, can I, I can't. Ask I'll just have to stop can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Well, I, okay. I understand why you were upset with him inviting himself on your on the trip and making out with your cousin and just kind of like just generally being a presence that you were not that you did not invite on this trip. It's understandable. But can I ask you now that it's all said and done and your cousin's into him and he's into your cousin. Uh, why do you care that he's trying to pursue your cousin? Well, I guess I, I don't care that he's trying to pursue my cousin. I care about like all the background stuff that happened around it because okay. him in the process, like in the pro like him pursuing my cousin was a result of his over blackoutness at all my family events and his yes. lack of like respect on hanging around my family. Yes. Um, and just his general demeanor around my family. Like I'm not yes. like, like I said before, like I'm not I don't care that he's talking to her or whatever. Yes. I talked to him about the way he acted around my family. Right. And You're honestly, not, as a yes. friend in general. Go ahead. And that's kind of what I'm concerned about. Because it's like okay. I can't really let that slide if you think it's okay to just like disrespect me yes. and my family just so casually yes. you know okay this is not a, this is not as simple as i don't want it, my friend dating my cousin this is there's more to this this is about the way yeah. he was acting on the trip this is about him getting blackout drunk and just you know being being a being a fuckhead and doing all this stuff and he know and and when when you when you had this conversation with him did you express that that it was about more than just um yeah of course and do you think he got, do you think he understood that? Or do you think he was still on the wave that you were just upset because she's your cousin? You know, that's a, that's a good question because when I talked to him, I don't really think he understood that because yeah. um, when I told him like, you know, I don't care that you're talking to her. I just care about the way you were acting, like what led up to that, like what uh -huh. you did to lead up to that. And he responded with, you know, I never would have done any of those things if I wasn't blackout drunk or if I wasn't super wasted. Like, you know, I never would have done those things sober, right? And I just don't, I, I don't really like, you know, my family <laughs> drinks and stuff, but I don't believe yeah. in being a whole different person and being a completely different, like making different decisions just because you're drunk. Like, you're still sure, you I don't either, at the yeah. end of the day. Like, you're still the same person regardless. If not, more of the truth comes out when you're drunk. The more real you comes out, I feel like. Well, listen, man, I'll say this. I get it. I understand why now. I think, you know, this is, again, a bigger issue than just uh, your friend dating your cousin. I think at a certain point, um, maybe it sounds like you need to have another conversation with him because I don't think he got it. You know? Yeah. And listen, my friend, if you have another conversation with him and he still doesn't get it, I mean, you don't have to be this guy's friend if you don't want to, you know? Um, yeah, man, this is, this is, this is tough, but I, I don't know. My kind of assessment after hearing all this is that he didn't understand because when you were telling me at first, I didn't understand. I thought it was just like, as I, 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 I didn't, I, I didn't realize that there was more to it than that. So I think you could benefit yeah. from another conversation. Yeah course i talked to him twice about it because after the first conversation he kind of texted me and was like i didn't understand any of what you said can you like call me back and give me a better explanation like that explanation sucked and he said he, I, he, he said like he oh, said you... that explanation sucked yeah he was like i just understood that you said a whole lot of fucking nothing like can you call me he, back he, please he literally Sucks. said i just understood that you said a whole lot of fucking nothing he, in those ex yeah exact copy and paste the <sighs> words he said that. okay let's let's i called him back kind of frustrated because i was yeah. like you know like i asked you if you had any questions or i asked you to have an open conversation and he kind of shrugged everything off and was like i don't i don't know what to say i don't know what to say so then just like yeah. that his response to me addressing it like calmly the way i'm talking now like his response to that kind of confirmed me not wanting to really be around that type of person. If I can't really have an open, transparent conversation with you and you're kind of just mm -hmm. shrugging me off and telling me to fuck off. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, it goes both ways, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fair, man. It's fair. Um, 
Dude, this guy is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he's definitely a, a character. My family really liked him, but a lot of people would just come up to me and be like, he needs to stop drinking, you know, but I don't know. I'm reassessing my distance away from him, you know. Um, right now, I'm not talking to him, but I can just take my space and do me for now. I'm not too concerned about it, but it's just I've known him for a while, so it's kind of been on my mind. But That's a tough thing when you've known the guy for a while, but um, I mean, you don't have to fucking have that be much of a factor in this. Yeah, for sure. Um, Well, Jan, listen, man, thanks for telling us this whole story and... Uh, uh, you know, I'm glad that you're uh, setting your boundaries appropriately with this guy. Um, I feel bad for I feel bad for your cousin that's about to start dating this guy. <laughs> I actually don't, I don't know, know whether they're still talking. So. Okay, well, listen. When that wedding happens, please let me know because I want to come. <laughs> it sounds like it'll be very fun. It'll be a, it'll be a weird wedding. We'll and we can there. all get blackout drunk together and laugh about it. Uh, well, Jan, anything you else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah, I just want to say thank you for hearing me out. And uh, I love your show. And uh, I really love what you're doing. Thanks, and man. hopefully I get to see you in Chicago when you're here. I'll be there. I'm going to Chicago. The Lincoln Lodge. I love that place. I'll be there. All right. Well, hopefully I'll see you there. Hey. All right. Thank you, Lock. Good night. Gek bless you. Hello? Hello? Elias! What's up? How are you, man? Pretty good. I'm chilling. Just got home. How can I get you today? What's going on? Uh, well, I talked to the call screener and I gave them uh, two options for choices. So, the first one was regarding um, me messing around with uh, the paranormal and demons and my fiancé is getting um, unhappy with the fact that it is now starting to linger in the home and affect her. And then the other option was that uh, I just finished cybersecurity school and I'm trying to get a job. It's been really difficult. Yeah, yeah, no, let's, and, well, I, let's, let's, do the, uh, let's do the ghosts. Okay. I'm a, yeah, I'm let's, on, do the uh, let's do the ghosts. All right, you're summoning okay. demons into the home and your wife is not cool with that. Yeah, there's one specific that I call the mimic that can like replicate voices and it's done my voice to her a couple of times and she gets really upset. You and then there's other summoned a, okay, you're okay, well. okay. You're gonna we're gonna have to do this one thing that you say. We're gonna have to process one thing that you say at a time. Okay, okay, okay. I want you when you say something. I want you to stop for a second so I can process it because I can tell that every word that is going to come out of your mouth is going to spark a thousand questions within me. So let's take this very slow. Okay. You have summoned a demon into your home who you claim can mimic the sound of your voice. Anyone's voice. Okay. Are you fucking with your wife? Are you? Because you, that would be such a fuck with thing if no, you say no, I've no, sexually no, no, summoned no, no. a demon that can uh, use my own voice, and then you her, tell, then you run, issue. you scurry off into another room, and then you go have the, the mm -hmm. Natalia, because, uh, and it's actually you. There's, uh, there's there's only one issue with that is it does other voices, and other people have had issues. So uh, my friend had uh, it mimic like his mom one time. Uh, I've had it do my grandma. I believe she's had it also do her mother. Um, it's done her to me before when she wasn't here. Um, yeah, it's not great sometimes. Okay. What other demons do you sell? And I actually, I actually thought it was gone for a while too, but it came up in a dream the other night, and I woke up in like a cold sweat, and yeah. it was not gone. What other demons do you summon into the house? Um, well, that's the only one I think I've actually summoned. A lot of other ones, I'll like go to a antique store, walk around until I feel like uh, I'm being watched, and then I'll usually try to hone in on like 
whatever object is giving me the jitters, I'll buy that. Uh, I've ordered things online. That's actually how I first got even interested in cybersecurity is because I was going on the dark web buying haunted shit and looking for grimoires. Uh, but I, my, like, previous most of all my right see uh, we're gonna I'm, I'm, i have to return back to my uh initially established thing of you saying one okay. thing because i knew this was gonna happen i knew you were going i knew you were yeah. going to say something like yeah i was buying haunted things on the dark web and then keep talking as if you didn't just say that and that we had to talk about what you mean by that so let's yeah. keep let's keep let's what were you buying that was haunted on the dark web. Um. Well, I think the first thing I did was a Ouija board, and that one it was. It was you fine. don't. Have, you mean, can I get a Ouija get board at Target. Yeah, but these ones, uh, a lot of people will almost document their experiences with it, so I can kind of get like this is when I was first really messing with it. Um. And so I didn't want to, like, dump, jump in over my toes or anything. I've only ever had, like, spirits come to me. Uh, like, when my first memory as a child is of an old spirit man watching me while I sleep. And that's continued all the way up until present day. And then after that, my grandma has recently told me that when I was young, uh, she would often find me playing games with nobody there. And it... And, and then eventually got narrowed down to I was playing with the spirit of a uh, young Indian girl because I was playing native because I'm in Arizona. I'm actually going to see you in Phoenix next week for my birthday. But um, oh, we got to talk about this on stage uh, anyway. I was playing like games I shouldn't know how to play, and uh, eventually my cousin got upset about it because she shared a room next to mine. And she would end up having issues. And then after that, it's just been various things here and there. But then I eventually got to looking more into how I can trigger it. Because I kind of enjoy the feeling of it. And so I was like, well, if they're not going to come to me, I'll bring, I'll bring them here. And that's when I started with the Ouija board. And then I started looking into Dybbuk boxes. And then that's how I started getting into demonology. Then I uh, did a lot of research on like the Salamic Seals and the Demons of Solomon, Andrew Crowley, uh, all that, all that good stuff. What is your life like outside of hunting demons? Um, uh, typical time. Uh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Go to work, hang out. You know what? I've been suppressing this, but I I want I want to hear from you, your thoughts on this. Look, okay. when you tell me that you're buying haunted Ouija boards on the dark web, and you're summoning spirits <laughs> that mimic the voices of random people, um, yeah, the the voice one was uh not as much of a as a on purpose one. It killed all my plants the next morning as well. Like, when I woke up, all my plants had died. So I was actually pretty pissed off about that. And then I've had some other ones where I wake up with, like, scratches and stuff. And those aren't cool. Are you sure but, these are... De are you sure these are demons that are visiting you? Yeah, I live alone. Uh, me and my fiance aren't moving in together till, till next month. So I've lived alone through some of this. And then I've lived with family before it and they were the ones uh like my mom and stuff who would get pissed off at me because it just weird shit would happen okay so i kind of took moving on my own as an opportunity to not get complaints get, you get complaints about the demons that you're summoning from the people that you live with so you're like okay so yeah you're like, okay like, finally get... so you're like okay finally i don't have any roommates i don't have any family i'm gonna summon all the demons i want in my studio yeah. apartment yeah, yeah, yeah. and nobody will bother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can I yeah, introduce like an idea? I'm not a real therapist. You know that about me, but yeah. um, I do like to think about things. I do like to wonder things. 
And as you tell me this, I'm wondering, is sitting alone in an apartment, summoning demons, healthy? Well, like, sometimes people, no, people come over and do it with me. It's just because no one wants to do it in their house. Like, last time my friend got caught with a Ouija board, his mom made him burn it. Because she started having dreams that there was a Ouija board in the house. So now we just kind of use my house as like the... Because I mean, I'm, I'm not renewing the lease here. It's kind of like a toss away. Though. You're not renewing the lease? No, the lease expires next month and then, you know, I'm out of here. I'm getting a house. So, so you're I just mean, leaving. Is, so you're like summoning... I mean, look, so you're just summoning all these demons for the next person to move in and hang out with? Not my problem. It's fucking reckless, man. I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I get calls like these a lot about paranormal things. And, um, you know, look, I don't believe. Is it insensitive to, for me to say to you That's that I don't believe? Why you can... I don't... Is it insensitive no, 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 for me to say to I'm you that I sure don't I believe. believe that you can summon demons? No, to this point, I'm still 50-50. Like, I always try to combat it against, like, well, like, when I started waking up with scratches, I was like, okay, maybe my dog jumped on me in my sleep. So, like, I didn't sleep yes. with the dog for, like, two months. Like, anything that I can do to disprove it, like, I will. Okay. All right. So, let's sit with this for a second, because I don't think you can summon demons. And half of you thinks you can't either. No, yeah, a good half of me thinks I can't. Okay, a good half. That's like that's like fifty one percent. No, I'd say it's like sixty forty. Like this is also like it's something to do, you know. But then there's times where it's like I can't explain what's happening, and then it. But I'll just, you know, just dismiss it because there's always, you know, I'm sure there's always some way you could break it down. But, I mean, one of these days, you know, maybe I'll just get something so solid that I'll, like, die on this hill. Again, we were, I've, but look, like if, you're doing this because you're bored, right? Uh, that's a part of it. Yeah, oh, definitely, partially. All right, so work with me on this, work with me on this. Is there a better thing you could be doing than summoning demons? I mean... I went to school and finished school. Okay. You ever, like, play video I mean, games? I've been doing other stuff. This isn't, like, a 24-7 thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. I Maybe I have an incorrect me. idea of what your life is I get like. Mad because, again, chat. I am imagining you alone in a studio apartment no, I live a pretty summoning life. demons. Like, uh, and I'm got... like, I are you okay? Are you hanging in no, there? No, no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I know, that's the like craziest got, part of it, is you sound like you're I'm, doing I'm out. great. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's pretty, we're, we're chilling. I mean, yeah. Elias, do you have any therapy advice for me? I'm jealous of you. I want your life. Um, I actually, so, do you, I actually always have wanted to ask you. And it's funny you guys started talking about like how you've gotten more empathetic and stuff because I actually wanted to ask you if you've ever start feeling like you're desensitized. Because I've been watching you since before the podcast. And so I've really kind of like seen the progression. And I almost feel like to me, you seem more desensitized now than you did before. But there's like certain things that'll get you excited. Usually when you have a guest on, that's why I love the guest episodes. Because it's almost like a flashback to to the uh, original therapy gecko back when dudes were talking about Donald Trump Donald Trump time traveling and yeah you know all that all that good stuff. so to answer your question I am about um, as desensitized to uh, callers as you are to demons and I'm also about as sure that the callers are real as you are. To demons. Well, that depends. How real do you think I am? One to ten. Uh, fuck, man. 
I think I would give you a... You know, I'm going to give you a 6 out of 10 for how real I think you are. Oh, okay, yeah, we're about... Do you know maybe I... Because I'm more on, like, the 4 for the demon. Like, I'm on the other end of the 60 40. What do you think gets me? What you mentioned, you you have done this psychoanalysis of me that I'm very curious because you see you're a very interesting person, and I want to hear Thank your you. analysis of me. So if you have, what do you what what do you, what do you think gets me excited? It's almost even if it's not like a great thing. Sometimes you'll I can just tell you're desensitized because it's something different, like. Weirdly, I think one of the most like hyped up I've heard you get recently. Do you remember uh, when that dude called in and you talked about fucking his friend's girlfriend's ass on prom night? Oh I yeah, that was with Benny Blanco. Most, yeah, I between that and there being a guy, I think that's the most like energetic and like really into the episode that you've that I've like noticed at least in a long, obviously I don't catch every stream, but just like from what uh, I can notice. Well, that was shocking. Like I mean, that was shocking. Or, that I'm, guy. Yeah, that was definitely. And it was almost like he didn't see what was wrong with that. Like you just fucked your girlfriend. Like, not sorry. Your friend's girlfriends at like, like that's like, would you rather get punched or would you rather get bitch slapped backhanded across the face? What else do you think of me as what else do you make of me as a human being? Um, I don't know. I think you seem like a good guy. I haven't met you in person. I hope to right. next month. That'd be cool. You can always summon me. Um, are you are you a demon lizard? Have the mimic cool. de- No, just summon the mimic demon and have him Paint his face screen and say things. Nah, I don't want to mess with that thing. It gave me a really bad nightmare the other night. Uh, what, what was the nightmare? I, 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 it was just really unenjoyable. So I was like in my apartment, and people I haven't even seen in quite a while were here. And for some reason, in my dreams, my apartment always looks different than it actually does, but it always looks the same every dream, like the same different. Uh, so there's always a hint of confusion almost to myself that I can tell it's not right, but I don't know why. So there, I'm always stressed when I have a dream about my apartment. And then I just remember going to check my phone and like, I couldn't see the light coming off my phone. It was almost like when someone has one of those uh, privacy protector screens. And then I like went to look up at my fiance. I was like, Hey, are you seeing this? And even though she was like an inch from me, her face was just like a shadowed outline and I couldn't see anything of her face. And it was just her voice talking to me. And I didn't understand why in the dream, but it was really upsetting to me. And then I, it it basically was just a continuation of weird morphed places of real places that I actually go to and shadow people that you couldn't see any features of them. And then they just had like, people I knew's voices coming out of them. Elias, I don't know if you're going to take this as a compliment or not, but talking to you makes me feel very high. I'm, I'm, well, no, I'm not that high. What is not that high for you? Okay, well, see, I recently found out that I do not perceive weed normally because I was listening to a, Burt Kreischler's podcast today. He was talking about the El Blunto blunts that are one gram. And he was talking about like how him and his friend were smoking it over the course of a weekend and it was a lot of weed. And then I thought back to about two months ago where me and my friend both bought one, smoked it in a sitting, said they were shit, and then proceeded to just go through a pack of different house pre rolls. And uh, so I am not smoking right now, actually. I'm, okay. I'm teetering off. I've only smoked a little bit just about 20, 30 minutes ago. And then uh, um, tomorrow I will completely cease for at least maybe 10 days or so. Take a little break. Elias, I'm going to let you go. But it was nice talking to you. 
You're a fascinating person. Who was I talking to you? Thank you. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Nope. Not that I can do. <laughs> okay. All right. Good luck, Alice. Try not to summon too many demons. Will do. Okay. Take care. All right. I will uh, see you in Phoenix. See you in Phoenix. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that was just now, but that was fascinating. Um. Yeah, I feel, I feel good. I feel good. Let's keep going. Hello. Hello. Who is this? This is Michelle. Michelle, what's going on with you? Well, recently on a whim, I went on Meetup. And I started a group. And the idea of the group is to go to different hiking trails. And I will be playing music. And I'll just dance. And the people who are there can try to copy me or just make up their own moves. And I have not done any events yet. I am definitely nervous. But So you... It started it the meetup group. To make a meetup group. So you started the meetup group, but you have not yet met up. No. What is preventing you from meeting up with the meetup group? Um, I, I want to have some sound choreography before I go. Some sound choreography. Okay, and so the point of this group is to hike and dance as well? Yes. Okay. Um, are you teaching a dance, or are you just kind of meeting up with people who like to dance as well? Um, so, I'd like to have some kind of routine that people can follow along with, but they they can also just do whatever they want. Okay. Okay. So, all right, let's say I'm in this meetup group, and you, Michelle... Are like, all right, Wednesday, 9 a.m., we're going to the thing. We're going to go to Mount Picklebottom, and we're going to climb Mount Picklebottom, and uh, we're going to do a dance when we get to the top. Is that is that kind of the theory? Um. Well, hopefully we'll be dancing on the way to the top. Oh, okay. So this is this is a hiking group where you are dancing while you are hiking? Yes. And Have you ever I done that before? Go on any. Um, a little bit. I have. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't go on any trails that are too challenging with things to trip over. I stick to paved trails. I have never heard of a group that that dances while hiking. Me neither. <laughs> Okay. But I was just walking much- my dog at the park one day. I started dancing and I thought, hey, this might be fun to do in a group. How many people have joined this meetup group? 22. You have 22 people who heard your pitch to hike a trail while dancing and said, I am in. Let's do it. Yes, and and they there were even three people who didn't have profile pictures, and I asked them to put one because I just want to know what everyone looks like, and they wanted enough to put up a profile picture. How many people have people sent you messages? Have they been like, "When are we doing this thing?" Uh, no one has asked when we're starting. <laughs> I made the group a few days ago. And the only thing preventing you from starting is that you don't have an actual routine. Yeah. Okay. And just anxiety in general. Okay. Do you have a do you have a trail in mind that you want to do this at? Yes, I do. Okay. 
Um, so all that's really missing for you is some kind of routine. Yes. Okay. When you were when you first discovered the dance hike, did you have some form of routine, or were you simply vibing and hiking? No, I was just vibing. Okay. And did you have a good time doing that? Yes, I did. Okay. Do you have some sort of portable speaker thing that you can bring with you on this hike? Yes. I Once I had this idea, I went on Amazon and I bought this really good speaker. It's waterproof. It can take a drop. It clips onto your belt. And do you have a playlist of music that you think would be good for for dancing? Yes, I do. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. What's the name of the meetup group? Can I ask you this? Yeah, it's um, My City Walk and Dance. Walk and Dance. Okay, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to throw something out at you. I'm going to throw something out at you. I don't think you need a routine. Because you're really you're throwing a walk and dance party. You're you're throwing a more you're more throwing a party than you are teaching any kind of a class. You know. So I think that for you to merely invite folks to go on this walk with you and to bring music and to start the dancing um, is enough to accomplish your goal, which sounds like it is to meet people and have fun. Yeah. So we established you don't have a routine. You don't. Or no, we've established you do not need a routine, and therefore it's okay that you don't have one. And so now we have to combat that you are just merely anxious about doing it. Yes. Okay, what are you anxious about in terms of doing it? Um, I guess just having so many people watching me dance. I've danced like in public before, but it was mostly like salsa. So everyone else is also dancing and they're focusing on their own thing. But here I'm going to be at the in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody's going to be dancing themselves. That's true. Michelle, are you generally um do you have you always been concerned with what other people think of you? Yes. Yeah, to the point of severe detriment to myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, I think that I think that getting over that is a long perhaps sometimes even lifelong arduous process. That uh, I cannot solve for you over the course of this phone call. But I will tell you this. I will tell you that um, some central things. One, getting over that fear is necessary. It is essential to being able to live a full life. If that's what you desire. In my opinion. Some people could argue with me that you can live a full life without getting over a fear of what other people think of you. But I think if you want to really unlock all that life has to offer, you need to get over that fear or at least deal with it. You don't have to rid your, you don't have to rid your body of it because you might never be able to accomplish that, but you can face it and you can deal with it. Uh, And you have to, in order to be able to do all the wonderful things that life has to offer, such as have little dance parties in the woods. And then yes. two, you, everyone who is going to this thing is also kind of a weirdo that likes to dance in the woods. So <laughs> you are going to be in uh, good company 
And it's going to be a group of 22 people who are all uh, nervous about... Uh, who are all so nervous about being seen dancing that they are only willing to do it in the woods. So you'd be in good company. Yeah, you have a good point there. Um, I am that that that's what I will tell you, Michelle. Um, I mean, I think it's impressive that you've gone as far as to actually make the group. Because a lot of the times I feel like I would get a call that says something like, I'm thinking about doing this thing. But you don't, you don't even think about doing it. You, you, you actually did it. But now you have to actually do the did and set the date. And I hope you do that. Thank you. I will. I'm just going to... That was... I think... Forcing myself to come up with a routine before it is just was just a way for me to postpone it. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. For sure. Yep. That's. I think it's. But I think it's. When I, I think came it's up with this idea. That. Yeah. Yeah. And when I came up with this idea, I had no routine, no idea what I was doing, and I had a lot of fun anyway. Yeah, I don't think you need a routine. I think you were right to say that the routine was just procrastinating you actually going and doing it. I've I had situations like that myself where um, I felt as though there was a missing piece and the actual missing piece was just overcoming the fear of doing the thing. So, um... Post it in the Discord, by the way. You don't have to. But if you want to, post it in the Discord. I, I bet there's somebody watching the stream who uh, lives in that area and would like to join you. So feel free to post in the Discord if you want. Um, Michelle, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yes, I have a funny story about my dog. I have a um, foam roller, and sometimes she gets a little heated and starts humping it. I do that with my foam roller as well. Um, they are very good sexual objects. Thank you very much for calling, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you, Lyle. Talk to you later. Now, you see, it's difficult because I, there were two. There were really two sides of my brain there when I was talking to Michelle. And one side of my brain is the one that really wants to encourage people to, um, d you know, d do their crazy ideas and live their life. And have fun and overcome their fears. And the other part is the part that would be a little pissed off if I was walking in the woods and somebody was blasting music. But I'd get over it. I'd get over it. I hope she does the dance party. I hope she does. Hello? Hello? Hi. No way. <laughs> way. Hey, what's up? Not much. What's up with you? Uh, I was just like watching your stream, man. This is crazy. You actually do sound different on the phone. <laughs> uh, am I talking to to Steve? Yeah. Uh, Steve, it says here that you're thinking about quitting your job at uh, Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How long have you been yeah. working there for? Um, like not very long. Like probably like I guess a month now. Okay. And it's like um, it's it's a lot. Yeah, why is it a lot? You know, honestly, it's like I can do like they put me on, you know, food or they'll put me on something and I can just do a task and that's fine. But when when they have me work with people like, you know, uh, when I have to like talk to people and take their orders and stuff, put it in the system, I, that's like it's it's uh, it's just a lot, you know, and, I mean, the... some customers are good. Is it a lot of just Sorry. unruly people? Like, it's actually not too bad. You know, I haven't had too many bad encounters. But I'm still obviously, like, in training and stuff. There's, like, a million drinks. So you have to learn how to make them all. Um, and that's, like, the last part of your training, surprisingly. Yeah. They do, like, food and then, like, uh, register and all that. But, mm -hmm. um, no, yeah, I've just been just been doing that 
pretty much. And it, it, it's it's people are like they're they're usually pretty good, but sometimes you get one that will just like kind of be in a hurry or kind of not care. Like you'll be like, "Hi, how are you?" and they'll just like say their order right away and just I don't know. Yeah, does that feel like dehumanizing? Like you're like a human tablet? Like a little bit, and and I mean, honestly, I I get it because like you're in a hurry, and obviously people are like it's the morning and stuff, but um, at the same time, like I always feel like I'm quitting things. Like I like uh kind of dropped out of college the first time, but like you know um. It was more of just like a, I didn't really vibe with that college and stuff, and it was during COVID. But then, um, like I'm in I'm in school again now. I go to the county, but it's like, uh, still just like not the vibe at all. <laughs> so you feel like you have a problem with quitting things too early? Maybe I don't know. That's yeah. kind of why why I'm like having a dilemma. Well, it's interesting to, when, when I think about quitting, it's, uh, there's, there's no, there's as much pride in staying as there is in quitting, right? Well, yeah, I, I yeah, think, I, I don't know, I, I think there's something to be said about having uh, consistency and being able to stick through to the end of something yeah. but there's also something to be said about being self-aware enough to realize that a situation doesn't work for you and moving on from it yeah what's all right so you're 21 what's um yep. what else is going on in your life are you so what are you in what are you in school for uh it's so, like i'm in the process of changing my major it's like a whole thing and I kind of don't know what I want to change to because I was just doing business. But um, it was like, I just really wasn't like, like I, I know I could do the work, like I'm very capable of it, but it's, I just really wasn't like into it at all or interested. Like it didn't engage me at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then, so do it's you like, I also have feel... anything? Do you have anything that is interesting to you? Uh, yeah, kind of. I'm into like botany and stuff and plants, but I'm not okay. exactly sure what I would do with that. Okay. Are you paying money to go to school? Uh, yeah, but it's county, so it's not you know, tuition's pretty low. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of just like I I always feel like I'm trying to make the decision for like my happiness and like to try and you know keep myself heading in a direction that will eventually make me happy or what I mm-hmm. what I want to go towards. But then I'm like maybe I'm just like giving up on things too early and like not not seeing things through. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, you just wake up and you go to work sometimes. So. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, man. I don't know. I I I uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to be. Uh, how to tell you what to do. Um. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, you know. I didn't even um, think I was going to get in. I just, like, called. Oh, that was crazy. <laughs> What's your ultimate dream in life, man? What do you What do you ultimately want to do? Uh, I really don't know. I, I, I think, like, high school took the fun out of a lot of things for me. Like what? But like, I mean, um, I don't know, just like learning and I don't, I feel like I don't love the whole like structured class environment stuff, but I feel like 
then again, maybe that's just like a lazy excuse, you know? <laughs> so. Well, well, you said you like botany, right? Yeah. Why don't you um explore that more? What can you do? Yeah. Uh, what can you do with a job? And but what can you do with um in botany? Are there jobs available for you? I honestly like don't know. I I've looked into it like a tiny bit, but not not like realistically, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, why don't you look into that? You give it a shot if you think that that's uh, yeah, I guess. what you like. I mean, I mean, if you haven't even looked into it, how do you even know that it's not an option? I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just like it, it feels like a lot of. I would, I would have to do like a whole like four year degree, which like I don't know if I want to do. Like I don't know. There's just a lot involved. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Somebody is saying that trade school is a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea, I guess. Yeah, have you ever thought about doing that? Uh, like, yeah, possibly. Okay. Could definitely think about it. Yeah, yeah, explore your options. I mean, man. it's not like end of the world. I'm just like... Kind of vibing along. I don't Somebody said join the military. You could join the military. I oh, don't know. That's, that's uh, not. There'd probably me. be a much, <laughs> a much there'd probably be a much larger commitment than um. There'd probably be a much larger commitment than, you know, school. But give it a chance to OnlyFans. Yeah. You could try that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't be of uh, more help to you, Stephen. I, I uh, no, no, man. Honestly, just talking to you like has made my day. It's like, you know, I've worked tomorrow. I have to be there early, and it's just like this is this is great. Just like kind of talk through. Okay, good, good. Is there any other kind of aspect yeah. of this that um you you wanted to talk about that you feel like you didn't get to? Uh. No, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. It's just like, you know, a lot going on, but, yeah. Um, well, Steven, is there anything else that you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, I will say just be kind to people and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't know what's going on in somebody's life. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, sometimes just a little thing can just like honestly be great for somebody. So, um, yeah, man, I yeah. Uh, I agree. Um, you know, look, I hope I hope yeah. that you don't get uh, kind of battered down by uh, the people who you're interacting with at your barista job. And uh, you know, I hope that what you just told me the um yeah. you know about Fine. wanting to be kind to people and whatnot. I hope that you in in whatever situation that you're in find ways to um practice that yeah definitely yeah. thank you for calling steven thank you good night hmm I don't, I, 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 you know, it's tough, man. I, uh, it's tough with like advicey things. And I appreciate that Steven said that he just felt like, um, talking about it. Cause I, I, I don't know. I wonder, um, I wonder, I guess, how to best serve this thing. Cause I, I, I more and more and more. Uh, actually, the, it's funny, the more I do this, the, the less qualified I feel to, um, you know, advise people on anything because it's so tough. It's so tough. I was just I was just saying this at the beginning of the stream. It's so tough to um, navigate things, and it's it's something I'm I'm struggling with like immensely now with on you know with myself, and um, I don't know. I it's it's I guess nice to commiserate with other people who are uh, struggling with the same thing, and I think that's a lot of people out there. Um, I think the main thing I got from Steven 
is like he's faced with this challenge that all of these people um that all of these people uh come to his coffee shop and they don't take the time to uh you know kind of talk to him like he's a person but he's understanding about that because you can't control how other people act towards you and he and he recognizes that and understands it and is not bitter about it which is great because i think it's something that's easy to um be bitter about and um i think for him you know even when the job gets tough i think uh the best thing he could probably do is is really learn to take those punches and and if he really truly believes in these these things that he's talking about of you know how he wants to be in the world uh he'll learn how to be them even in the face of unruly people i think that that's the opportunity that this you know position is granting him i think he should take advantage of that opportunity to the degree that it's beneficial and not let it uh you know destroy him 